our next live English session will be um, next Monday, July 18th with Dr. Taylor Rush from the Cleveland Clinic. On your screen now is this week's and the next Mindfulness Monday's topics for our PD Health at Home virtual education platform. So um, next Monday, Mindfulness Mondays will be on mental well-being. This Wellness Wednesday, Wednesday, July 13th, we're going to be doing something fun for our social engagement series, Singing with Parkinson's Disease. And then uh, every Friday, we release a new Fitness Fridays on our YouTube channel or our PD Health at Home landing page, which Jennifer will put the link in the chat. Um, our next live one will be on July 22nd, featuring Rock Steady Boxing of Music City. So if you're interested in joining the live Fitness Friday, uh, tune in on July 22nd. And we're so thankful for our sponsor, the Light of Day Foundation. Their generosity makes our programs possible through PD Health at Home. If you're new to Parkinson's disease, you're new to the Parkinson's Foundation, we are here for you. So please use our website, parkinson.org. Contact our helpline staffed by Parkinson specialists at 1-800-4PD-INFO. If you prefer to type or write us a note, you can email us at helpline at parkinson.org. And we are asking for feedback, suggestions. It is a new year for the Parkinson's Foundation. So please, at the close of our event, that Zoom um, landing page will pop up with a link to a survey. Give us your feedback. Let me know, let Jennifer know what we're doing well, what we could do better, more topics that you would like to hear more about and practice with more mindfully. So well, that's my little spiel for the morning or the afternoon or evening, wherever you're tuning in from. And so now I will pass the camera, the microphone to our expert, Dr. Catalina McInerney from the University of Miami. Thanks, Catalina. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me here. I really, really appreciate it. I love the, the opportunity to participate in Mindful Mondays. Um, as Krista said, my name is Dr. Catalina McInerney. Welcome to everyone. Thank you for being here. I see some familiar faces, others not so familiar, and this group is so big. I, um, I think that's a wonderful feature of it, and people from so many places all over the country and outside the U.S. even, so um, in Thanks again for being here. Uh, I am a neuropsychologist at the University of Miami uh, in the Division of Neuropsychology and Cognitive Neuroscience. So I am going to spend just a few minutes talking about how mindfulness can help you be a little bit more effective and more efficient in your daily life. After that, I will guide you through a mindfulness exercise. And when we finish, we will have some time for discussions and asking any questions that you might have. Um, so if you have any questions, like Krista mentioned, just feel free to put it in the chat. Or if you want to hold on to your question, ask, uh, ask it out loud at the end of the session. I think you can do that. I, I might be mistaken. It might just be through chat. Uh, anyway, let me get started with uh, talking about how mindfulness can make you more effective, more efficient in your daily life. So to understand that, we need to understand what mindfulness is, right? Some of you are very well versed in mindfulness, but it never hurts to revisit what it is that we're talking about when we're talking about mindfulness. And as uh, I always like John Kabat-Zinn's uh, definition for those of you who don't know, John Kabat-Zinn is the founder of mindfulness-based uh, stress reduction. And he defines mindfulness as paying attention in a particular way, paying attention on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. There are two components of mindfulness. One involves regulating attention so that it is maintained in the immediate experience. Um, it is the act of doing these seated exercises like the one that we are going to do today, which trains your brain to be more attentive to what your body needs, to what your what thoughts are going through your head, how your mood is, how, how your surroundings are in the present moment. 
Um, so it, the seated exercise sort of trains your brain to be more mindful. The second component is putting that into practice, um, is living in a mindful way, living in a way where you are living, going about your day, not necessarily maybe always paying attention to your breathing, but rather being very mindful of where you are in the present moment, what's going on, leaving uh, behind or not paying so much attention to the baggage that you might be carrying, to the worries, to the regrets of the past, and maybe the worries and anxieties about the future, but rather living very present and in the moment. So when you practice mindfulness, you really are training yourself to be a much better observer. And by doing that, uh, you can then act much more effectively and efficiently when presented with challenges. Let's think of like a fish tank. Imagine that your house key falls in your fish tank and all of a sudden the sand lifts up all the water, all the sand the, the, from, the, from the fish tank. It makes the water really, really murky, right? If in a rush to go in after the keys, you stick your hand in there, what happens when you stick your hand in there and try to find the key? What's going to happen is that you're going to make the water even muddier, even messier. Um, and maybe without even noticing, you might break something in the worst of cir circumstances, maybe hurt one of your fishes in the fish tank, right? It's not the most effective strategy. If instead of doing that, if instead of going with your gut reaction, not thinking about it and just going in and diving after the keys with your hand, if instead of doing that, you wait, you stand still, you watch everything happen, you watch as the keys go down and the sand sort of settles down in the bottom, then you can see everything more clearly just by stepping back for a minute and watching what is truly going on, you allow things to settle down a little bit. And then when everything is settled, you can go in with your hand, get the keys and not disturb anything in the process. So hopefully that fish tank analogy can help you illustrate the benefit of becoming a better observer in your life and in your daily activities. So the, um, the point here is to observe, to analyze what is it that my body needs? What is it that really is going on in the moment? Maybe taking a couple of breaths, and studying the situation before anxiously jumping in to do something that maybe is not the best strategy. So paying attention to our surroundings, paying attention to our bodies, paying attention to the present moment can make us a lot more effective in our day to day. All right, so we can talk a little bit more about that after this exercise. Uh, now I am going to take you through a brief exercise that I planned for you. If you are new to this, for those of you who are new to mindfulness, please know that it is normal, absolutely normal for your brain to wander. Um, and actually, when you notice your mind wandering, just appreciate that moment because that moment of wandering is a really precious moment of self-awareness. So appreciate that moment and come back to the exercise, come back to this moment, back to focusing on your breathing. Um, okay, so let's get started. Let me make sure I time myself so I don't go overboard. All right. So this is a mindful breathing exercise and it should take about 15 minutes. To begin this mindfulness of breath exercise, just focus on your 
posture, make sure that your back is upright so that you can breathe better. Your feet can be on the floor or uh, if you want to cross them underneath you, that is okay. If you're seated on a chair, I would suggest that your legs be on cross, but be in a comfortable position. You can close your eyes, or if you'd rather keep your eyes open, just rest your gaze on an area in your room where you feel comfortable. So to start, take a few deep breaths in and out at your own pace. Noticing now the feeling of your feet, any feelings on the toes, the balls of the feet or the heel. Breathing and working your attention up to the ankle, the calves, the shins, your legs. Maybe noticing any sensations in your knees, your upper legs or thighs. Taking a moment to breathe and notice the weight of your body on the chair, how you feel sitting on that chair, breathing in and out at your own pace. Continue to focus your attention on your breath and on your body, working up your body through your torso, your arms, your hands. Maybe pay attention to the temperature in the room, whether it's hot or cold. Continuing to draw your attention to your body, any feelings in your shoulders, your neck, your upper back. Notice how your chest feels as it expands and contracts with your breathing. Noticing your jaw, your eyes, the ridge of your nose, your forehead, all the way to the top of your head. All while doing this, continuing to breathe. Breathing at your own pace and scanning your full body from the top of your head all the way to the tip of your toes. Perhaps you notice some tension or discomfort, wherever that might be with the in-breath, hold that attention, notice that tension. And with the out-breath, allow that tension to be released allow it to melt away. Again, on the in-breath, hold that tension, notice that tension. And on the out-breath, release, allowing your body to relax just a little bit more. Breathing in and out bringing your attention back to your breath. Notice how the air feels as it comes into your body, through the nose if possible, but it's okay if you're breathing in through your mouth. Notice the temperature of the air as it moves into your body how it feels when your lungs are full of oxygen. And how it feels when the air comes out of your body as your stomach contracts, 
as the air flows out of your lungs and out through your mouth or your nose, whichever is more comfortable to you. Breathing deeply, slowly, at a pace that is comfortable for you. Moving your awareness to your chest, how your chest feels as it goes up and down each time you take a breath in and let that breath back out. You might have noticed your mind wandering. Maybe you've become distracted with a noise, an internal thought, a recollection of something in the past or plans for later today or your future. Any type of mind wandering is what our minds will naturally do. Simply notice that without trying to judge it or evaluate it, just notice it and return your attention back to your breath. Back to this exercise. Bringing your attention now just to the sensation of the in-breath, how it feels that it, it fills your lungs, how your body feels when it is full of oxygen. Notice each time you breathe in, that sensation, just the simple sensation of breathing in. How does that feel for you? Now shift your awareness to the out breath. Each time you breathe out, notice how your body feels as it releases tension, as it releases all the oxygen from your body. Breathing in and out at your own pace, noticing the, the sensations of your body each time you exhale. Now noticing the full cycle of the breath from inhale to full exhale. Perhaps even noticing that brief pause between the in-breath and the out-breath. Breathing in and out, noticing the cycle of your breath as it goes in and out of your body. If you'd like continuing to breathe in and out at your own pace, you can bring attention to your breath by counting how many counts you can count on your way in and on your way out. Maintaining your breath slow and deep and comfortable. Maintain your breathing at a rate that is comfortable for you. If it's helpful to you, you might count how many counts it takes you to go in, to breathe in, and how many times it takes, counts it takes you to breathe out. 
You can even challenge yourself a little bit by taking one more count in and one more count out as long as it is comfortable to you. Once again, you might have noticed your mind has wandered. Like before, just notice that. Wherever your mind may have gone and returning your attention back to your breath. Back to focusing on your breathing. And you may aid yourself by counting how many counts it takes you to breathe in. How many counts it takes you to breathe out. While you count your breaths, you might notice it may be a change in the rhythm of your breath. You might be paying attention to whether your breaths are deep or shallow. Don't try to evaluate whether this is good or bad. Just be curious and observe each breath. Your breathing is the way it is. You are simply attending to it observing it, noticing its qualities and the many ways in which it affects your body as the air goes in and as it goes out. Now, while we continue to breathe, let's bring our attention back to the entire body, noticing any sensations from the top of your head, down through the neck, the shoulder, the arms, your torso, your legs, all the way down to the tips of your toes taking stock of any tension or any areas where you feel a little bit more loose, noticing the rhythms of your body with each breath. Now taking just a couple more deep breaths. Slowly returning your attention back to the room. If your eyes are closed, you might open them. Re engage in the rest of your day. When you are ready, I am happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much for your attention to this exercise. I hope that it was a helpful one for you. Thank you, Dr. McInerney. Sure. So if you have any questions about uh, today's exercise or how mindfulness might benefit a Parkinson's disease or you as a care partner or uh, adult children with a, a parent or loved one with Parkinson's, uh, we have a few minutes to answer some questions. I always like to ask how, how do you feel? Um, it's always really nice for me to practice, you know, taking a check-in on how I feel before I have a mindful meditation, especially specific to breathing. Um, and, uh, and then checking in afterward, well, how do I feel now? So.
Joan writes to me and says that she, she liked the fish tank analogy. It's very helpful. I'm glad you liked it. It's, uh, it, it's one that we use a lot, um, but I, I think it, it is helpful and hopefully it helps you in your daily life. I really feel that in many situations when we start feeling a little bit overwhelmed, if we just stop and take just one breath, right? Just one single little breath, it can bring that exercise to mind and just stop for a second and pay a little bit more attention. I, uh, you know, it's kind of like if you're trying to cross a busy street and you do it very hair, like in a big hurry, you might run a lot of risks, but if you stop and look both ways and then you can do it very easily and safely. Um, any comments about, um, uh, Parkinson's specifically to mindfulness. Yes, definitely. So in general, reducing the amount of stress in our daily lives, it can be very helpful for Parkinson's in terms of, you know, it's, it's not a cure-all by any means, but it does help manage the symptoms in a very big way in terms of it can reduce symptom, uh, like, tremor intensity, it can help um, uh, uh, ex, ex, uh, de, oh my gosh, I'm losing my, my having word finding difficulties, but it can help you relax your muscles. And so as you help relax your muscles, it can help with some of those dystonias, it can help with some of the cramping. And sometimes when the, the symptoms are particularly troublesome, remembering to be present in the moment because very frequently when those symptoms are exacerbated, our brains immediately go to, oh my gosh, this is the worst. I'm getting, you know, my condition is getting worse. I'm never gonna be able to function normally. And we can start sort of catastrophizing in our own brains. So if we can sort of, part and notice those thoughts happening, but knowing that just because we're having a thought, it does not mean that it's true, right? It just means that it's a thought going through our head. And then we can focus more on the present moment. You can let go a little bit of those worries. And again, sort of relax your body a little bit more. The more that we have those uh, stressors under control and that we can live a life that is a little bit less, um, less anxious, the more that you allow those medications to work, or if you've had surgery, it helps manage those symptoms. It just overall helps a lot with symptom management. And I, I'm sure Krista has other things to add. If, so feel free to jump in, please, at any point, if you'd like. Sure. I think, um, there's, there's one element or, characteristics about Parkinson's disease that mindfulness um, can really play a part in for the whole general public, but specifically for Parkinson's disease is our mental health. When you take those moments of pause to check in with yourself, I mean, for the care partners here, how often do you really say, how am I today? And when you take those moments to really listen, like this mindful breathing, those moments of pause, you can start to hear and feel how you actually are feeling versus going through autopilot of the next task to do. And when a person with Parkinson's stops and pauses mindfully for those few moments, can start to move through life with a little bit more grace, a little bit more ease, and a little bit more gratitude. So it has a direct implication and, and research shows this, that mindfulness when practiced living with Parkinson's disease, or even for the general public totally, has a direct impact on your relationship with yourself and others. So why not practice it? <laughs> yes. How many times a day could we practice this, Dr. McInerney? You can practice it as often as you'd like. Um, one thing I, I like to focus on is that um, following this practice and being consistent with the practice is really, really helpful. Uh, don't worry about having some people when they start doing mindfulness, they feel like I have to do this for 20 minutes a day, or I have to do this, you know, you hear of celebrities that spend two hours a day doing this type of exercise, you don't have to do that. 
the more you do it, the better, right? Practice makes perfect. But truly, if you do it a minute or two a day, that's going to be great. The ideal, this is just research-based, the most of the research exercise um, articles that are out there are about folks that practice it 20 minutes a day. So if you are able to practice it 20 minutes a day, you will be on pace with all those studies that have been done that show a really great benefit for your brain. That being said, if you have a minute here, a minute there to do some of these exercises, that is absolutely fine. And I, when I find myself really overwhelmed or really like I'm having a, you know, a tough day, I have a lot of thoughts in my head, I might take a break and do one of these. Um, I find that for each person that I practice mindfulness with, everybody has a different modality that they like the best, right? Like for some people, uh, body scan exercise, for some people, just a mindful breath exercise is better. So choose the ones that you like the most that are, make you, you know, that serve you the best and practice those. And I know I'm going over people's time, so I want to make sure that I'm uh, respectful of that. Thanks, Dr. McInerney. I actually had someone write me, isn't, isn't mindfulness uh, a way of living? It's kind of like a lifestyle, a constant activity. And I was getting right, I was getting ready to write back to you before you concluded your comment, Dr. McInerney. But yes, mindfulness is a lifestyle. It's a way of living. Um, it's the same equivalent to your exercise routine. But this is exercise for the brain and for the heart, I like to say. Um, it's a big feat to try and um, get yourself to mindfully react and behave throughout every day. So if you can pause for five minutes and breathe mindfully or eat mindfully, turn the TV off and sit and really enjoy your food tonight for dinner, that is a mindful activity. So yes, it is a way of, a way of life. Um, we got to start somewhere. And mm -hmm. being here today with us is one, a good way to start to cultivate that practice. So that is our time together. Dr. McInerney, thank you so much um, for your guidance today. I know that I feel better in my Monday afternoon and I'm looking forward to what I have coming up next. And um, I will see you all next Monday. Uh, Dr. McInerney will return in September. So she'll, um, she'll be with us in September and we'll see you guys next Monday with Dr. Taylor Rush. Take care everyone. Thanks again for having me here. Bye. Bye-bye.